And we are live at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, getting set to watch the North Carolina State Wolfpack and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Hello again, everybody. Paul Cameron, your host here on the ACC Sports Center. With me, Coach Lefty Vizal. And Lefty, the question right away, what does the six-seeded Wolfpack have to do to knock off these tough Tar Heels? Well, Paul, I think they got to get back on defense. I thought Virginia did a great job yesterday of getting back on defense and stopping North Carolina's, North Carolina's fast break and their secondary break. Then they've got to take their time on offense and get good shots and handle North Carolina's traps, which they're awful tough at. In fact, I think that's why North Carolina won yesterday. Virginia handled it great for the first overtime in the entire game, and then at last overtime, they stole a couple on the trap that really hurt Virginia. One thing Virginia did well yesterday, they hit the boards out rebounding the Tar Heels. Well, I thought Virginia was tremendous on the board yesterday. Terry had them blocking that, and they did a super job on the board, and State's got to do the same thing today to stay in the game with these guys. Well, after a pair of double overtime games in the semifinals yesterday on Saturday, you would think that people would be completely wrenched to basketball, but no, sir. These fans were excited. They filled up this Capitol Center, and we're going to be back. We're getting set for the tip-off of the 87 championship. Back after these messages from Natural Light. The 19,000 seat Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, the site of this 1987 ACC championship final game between the Wolfpack of North Carolina State and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Coach, you mentioned something a moment ago about the Wolfpack staying in the locker room longer than the Tar Heels. Why would that be an advantage for a team? Well, I don't know if it's an advantage, but, if, you know, psychologically, Jimmy may be playing and pl trying to play with their minds, you know. I never did like my team to come out and just shoot around like North Carolina did because I thought it took the edge off of them. I think he held him back for 20 minutes before game time and said, let's go get them, guys, and forget about shooting, just play good defense, play basketball, let's win the ACC championship. All right, at this time, let's turn you over to our game announcers for today's championship final, Marty Brenneman and Dan Bonner. This 34th Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tournament, without question, has been one of the expected as well as the unexpected. And Dan Bonner, the expected, of course, is that the number one seed, North Carolina, is where everyone thought they would be. That's in the championship round. The unexpected is that their opponent is NC State. But that is simply an extension of what we have seen as a tournament of many, many surprises. It sure has been a tournament of surprises, Marty. Yesterday in the semifinal, North Carolina State, the number six seed, was matched up against Wake Forest, the number seven seed. That's something that's never happened in the ACC before. And while North Carolina was expected to be here, the road that they've traveled, I think, is a little bit tougher than they imagined. They had to play very well in double overtime to beat Virginia yesterday. Considering all the tradition and history that goes back to this tournament's beginning in 1954, it is somehow fitting that North Carolina and North Carolina State are meeting in the championship. North Carolina has won 10 ACC championships, and that's more than anybody else. North Carolina State follows right behind with nine, but interestingly enough, even though they've won 19 championships between them, this will only be the fourth time that they've actually played for the title, and in the first three games, North Carolina holds a two-to-one edge. And the big advantage, the big thing is that if you're looking for trivia and statistics to talk about, the biggest margin of victory in this tournament, 37 points involved these two ball clubs back in 1968 when North Carolina defeated NC State 87-50 to for the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament Championship that year. It will be interesting today to see how this crowd is divided in terms of support for the Tar Heels as opposed to support for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Well, you better believe that some fans have gotten some tickets from those six schools that have lost, and so it'll probably be a pretty even division. Well, we're looking forward to an exciting afternoon of basketball. This crowd is, without question, wrapped up. And we'll be back with more from Landover right after this. This Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament game is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Paul Cameron for the ACC Sports Center. For the last five years, we've had five different winners in this ACC championship. That promises to change today. As the Wolfpack and the North Carolina Tar Heels, of course, they were winners of not only ACC titles, but national titles as well back in 1982 and 1983, respectively. Right now, once again, let's go to Marty Brenneman and Dan Barter. And time now for the Mazda game plan, brought to you by Mazda. 
Dan, the good coaches have to be good motivators. Jimmy Valvano, admittedly, in a tough situation today as he takes on the Tar Heels for the third time. He lost to them by 18 points at Chapel Hill. Later on in the ACC regular season, they go to Reynolds Coliseum. He loses by 17. What do you do to motivate a ball club today? I don't know that it's a matter of motivation as much as it is the players realizing that North Carolina State's a different team now than they were at either one of those two points. Kenny Drummond is no longer the point guard. Quinton Jackson is now. In the first game in Chapel Hill, neither Charles Shackelford nor Chucky Brown played. North Carolina State, it appears anyhow, the evidence in their play in this tournament would certainly indicate that they finally found the chemistry that they're looking for, and so I think that it'll be a much different game today than it was previously. Okay, we'll see how things pan out. This has been our Mazda game plan brought to you by Mazda. And one of the interesting sidelights of our television coverage here this afternoon as we get a chance to go inside the officials' dressing rooms. The Atlantic Coast Conference Supervisor Official Fred Barakat is standing by with the three game officials and the alternate. Fred? Thank you, Marty. I'm in the locker room right here before the game today, the championship game of the ACC. And it's important, I think, for the viewers out there to understand that the officials have to get ready exactly the same way the teams and the coaches have to get ready. We want to make sure that our officials rise up to the level of that basketball game, that the intensity level out there is going to be very high, and we have to make sure we meet that. Joe, you're the referee on today's game. What are some of the things that you've told your crew? Well, we had a great pregame, Paul and, and Dick and myself, and uh, we talked about the inside play, making sure that the, uh, the board play is clean without anybody coming over the backs and gaining advantages in that area. Also, we talked about the guard play on the uh, guard bringing the ball up. We don't want that defensive man pushing them all over the court. Okay, thank you, Joe. Back to you, Marty. Thank you very much, Fred. Dan, the realization of a dream come true for you, you finally reached the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. That's right, Marty. I've been having a tough time. I'm used to leaving after the semifinals, so it'll take me a while to get adjusted today. Sounds good to me. The Atlantic Coast Conference season has been reduced to two ball clubs. The championship round coming up here today. It's been a season of ups and downs for North Carolina State. While others might have quit on them, they never quit on themselves. At the beginning of this ACC tournament, the Wolfpack was anything but a favorite to reach the finals. The title game is here, and for Jim Balvano's team, this is the time. This is the time to remember. Heels have had a truly memorable season, a 29-2 record, undefeated in conference play, a number two national ranking, but the job hasn't been completed. For Dean Smith's team, this too is the time. This is the time. the title game of the 34th Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. North Carolina versus North Carolina State. Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions present the championship game of the Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. Brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Company. South Carolina National Bank. Natural Light, Food Lion, Central Fidelity, Pepsi, Piedmont Airlines, and by NCNB.
over Maryland on the side at the Capitol Center. 19,200 people getting, finding their seats right now. We're getting close to tip off. Paul Cameron along with Lefty Giselle. Of course, Coach will be back at halftime. But one thing I noticed, State has come out and warmed up. Charles Shackelford, he was a one-legged center yesterday, and he is hopping around, limping a little bit. Limping, but once the tip off starts, he'll be all right, I'm sure. And uh, I noticed Jimmy Valvano walking in. He was, he was staring. He, I don't think he saw anybody, so he's intense today. Yeah, that championship fever has a way of taking some of that pain out of an ankle that has been swollen up. That's right. He'll be ready. Don't worry about Shaq. <laughs> All right, Coach. We're going to be keeping up with not only our today's day, but we're going to keep up with conference tournaments from around the nation today because, remember, it's pairings day for the NCAAs. The Big East Championship, the Hoyas, and the Big Orange of Syracuse, and in the Southeast, it's Alabama and LSU. Elsewhere, the Big A Championship contested between Missouri and the Kansas Jayhawks at 2 o'clock today. That's the tip-off time. Memphis State and the Louisville Cardinals in the Metro Championship. And in the Southwest, it'll be Texas A&M going against Baylor. Their tip-off, 2 o'clock in the SWC. Lefty, got any final comments about this one? No, not about this. I noticed on that screen, though, Louisville's still in this thing. Somebody better watch out for Louisville. If they win that tournament today and get an NCAA bid, you know, Denny Crum might just fool some people. It's funny how teams have a way this time of the year of really getting their acts together, finding the right chemistry, as we saw back in 83 with Jimmy V's team. That's right, and Jimmy, I think that... A, a ACC team has never won a national championship that didn't win this tournament. So if Jimmy wins it this year, it may be a good sign. If Carolina wins it, it'd be a good sign for them. Well, historically speaking, the team that wins the ACC championship does well in the NCAAs. The Capital Center is the site, and we are getting set for our tip-off of this championship game. State and Carolina will be back live to Landover after you watch this. championship game from the Capitol Center. Landover, Maryland, 19,200 seats. Looks like everybody and the cardiac pack just might be back. We'll find out. Of course, the last time in Landover back in 1976, there was a miracle. That was the Virginia Cavaliers. They, too, were seated six. So are the NC State Wolfpack. Time now to learn our starting lineups. Let's go across the court to our public address announcer, Mar Brooks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Capitol Center and the finals of the 1987 ACC Tournament. Here are the starting lineups. At forward for North Carolina State, number 23, 6'8", senior from Washington, D.C., Benny Bolton. At forward for North Carolina, Number 24, 6'11", senior from Kohler, Wisconsin, Joe Wolf. At forward for North Carolina State, number 52, 6'8", sophomore from Leland, North Carolina, Chucky Brown. At forward for North Carolina, number 35, a 6'10", senior from Ashley, Pennsylvania, Dave Popson. Center for North Carolina State, number 33, 6'10", sophomore from Kinston, North Carolina, Charles Shackelford. At center for North Carolina, number 34, a 6'9", freshman from Virginia Beach, J.R. Lee. Now the guards for the Wolfpack, number 14, 6'5", junior from Springfield, Massachusetts, Vinny Del Negro. Fourteen, six-three sophomore from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Jeff Lebo. At the other guard, number thirty-five, six-foot junior for Monopolis, Maryland, Quinton Jackson. And for North Carolina, number thirty, six-three senior from Queens, New York, Kenny Smith. Wolfpack head coach Jim Valvano. The Tar Heels head coach, Dean Smith. Lefty, any jitters for the players and the coaches right now? No, right now they're fired up. They're saying, look, let's get the introductions over with. All this mess out of the way. Let's
let's get to war. Let's get to playing and see who's going to be the champ. Very simple. I'm Jerry, but let's get the lights off and turn it over to Marty Brenneman and Dan Potter. The championship game of this 34th Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tournament are got to get underway. The North Carolina Tar Heels, 29-2, second ranked in the nation against the upstart North Carolina State Wolfpack, 19-2. And a team coming into this championship game off of five consecutive wins and Dan Bonner hoping for an NCAA bid. And you can talk to any two people in here. You'll get two opinions. You talk to 20 people. They'll be evenly divided as to whether North Carolina State must win this game or not. I tell you what, though, if North Carolina State wins, they don't need to sit around tonight and wonder. They can skip the pairings because they're in. The automatic bid, of course, goes to the winner of this tournament, but four clubs appear to be absolute locks. North Carolina, Virginia, Clemson, and Duke. State trying to make it five, and Georgia Tech waiting in the wings, hoping to see it go to six. Championship game underway. Carolina with a chip. J.R. Reed, Jeff Lebo as Carolina sets up. And State lines up in a man-to-man. -man. It's going to be tough for Shackelford against Reed, even though State's going to win that battle right there, but it's going to be tough for Shackelford trying to defend J.R. Reed. Jack is limping a little bit. He really showed us something yesterday, limping up and down the court against Wake Forest for a double overtime game, and he's going to have to do the same thing today. North Carolina, as it did yesterday in the semifinal start against Virginia, turns the ball over on its first possession. The baseline jumper by Chucky Brown, and the rebound corral by Big Dave Popson. And North Carolina is one of the few teams that can match the size of North Carolina State along the front line. Smith, of course, running the show. Popson holding high goes to J.R. Reed, the outstanding freshman. Popson inside. A great cut, an equally great pass, and North Carolina takes a 2-0 lead. Dave Popson had his career high in the quarterfinal game of the tournament against Maryland, and then Joe Wolf had his career high yesterday, so Popson started that well. The backdoor cut by Del Negro, but the shot rolls off, and Vinny, who hauled out 12 rebounds yesterday in the double overtime win against Wake Forest, gets the rebound. Shackleford, baseline by Del Negro. We are even at two. And Del Negro is playing with such confidence from that number two guard instead of the point guard. He's just a different player. Carolina back on the attack. State remaining in the man-to-man -man defense. Joe Wolf, who's had an outstanding tournament for the Tar Heels, as has that young man. Here's the jump hook by Reed. The rebound controlled by Chucky Brown. Starting for the third straight game in this tournament, Jimmy Balbano is going to stay with a pat hand at Reap Team victories in the quarterfinals and, of course, yesterday against the Demon Deacons. North Carolina State playing slowly. They don't want to get in a running game with North Carolina. That's a problem they had the first two times out when Carolina got them 96-78 and 96-79. Del Negro stops, deals it off. Good defense by Jeff Lebo and a bomb for two by Benny Bolton. There's another guy who's had a good tournament. Benny Bolton scored 19 points the first day. He had 16 yesterday. He's played very well. Just over two minutes gone. The Wolfpack lead the Tar Heels 4-2. Inside, J.R. Reed and bubbled the ball out of bounds. He was wide open as he freed himself up from Shackleford and just lost possession. We tend to think about J.R. Reed sometimes and how great a player he is, but it's possible he's got a couple jitters being in his first ACC Tournament Championship game. Stayed with a lead and stayed with the ball. Brian Jackson getting double-team pressure in the backboard, but State breaks it. Bolton inside. Shackleford not enough on it. Chucky Brown follows. And he'll go to the free throw line. As State shows some domination here in the early going on the board. North Carolina State did a great job getting the ball inside, attacking. Great pass by Bolton to Shackelford. Reed's defense is what caused Shackelford to miss. But NC State, a very powerful rebounding team, is able to get the offensive rebound on that occasion, fouled by Dave Popson. Good play by Chucky Brown. And the foul against Popson. You know, if State doesn't get anything else out of this tournament, and certainly not downgrading what they've accomplished so far, the one thing that they have found out, this kid right here can play he's come off the, the bench where he was where he was sitting he was coming off the bench but instead he's coming he's come on as a starter and I think that's given Jim Valvano a little more flexibility rather than having him come off the bench and as you say he's played well that he has 21 points and 15 rebounds in the first two games and now state leads by four Scott Williams in the North Carolina lineup as Dean Smith typically makes an early substitution Good defense by Del Negro. And Bolton with a hand in the face of Joe Wolf. you got to get out and get a hand in that finish face. In and out. Tip 
Scott fails. Williams battling, and Popson able to save it as he wings it outside to Lebo. And boy, that's a smart play to throw it out that far, Marty. Lots of times you'll see guys throw it in real close. Scott Williams, while we're talking about young men who've had good tournaments, he's had a whale of a two-day stay here at Landover. He made a couple of big, big plays in that double overtime win yesterday. He has been the second leading rebounder on this team in the first two games. Shackleford, his jumper doesn't make it. The follow by Chucky Brown, and again, he'll go to the free throw line. This time, Scott Williams on the foul. Chucky Brown's been paying attention to you, Marty. He heard you say what the kind of a job he's been doing. Look right there. Nobody blocks him out. Brown with a nice step to the basket to get to position. The only person there is defending against him. See, Williams comes to double team, and that leaves Brown wide open. Leaves Kenny Smith alone against Brown, and Brown is just bigger than Kenny Smith and stronger, and so he's able to get the ball. He is two for two from the line. State leads it six to four. I'm sure there are state fans who have already resurrected memories of that 1983 season. The way this club has come on toward the end. For the second time, the Wolfpack lead by four. J.R. Reed back in the Tar Heel lineup. Scott Williams goes to the bench. State continues to be matched up in the man-to-man. Chucky Brown's now matched up against J.R. Reed. That'll be it. Kenny Smith stops the ball. He's in and out. Rebounded by Joe Wolf and scored. Neither team seems to be able to handle matters on their own defensive board. North Carolina State has gotten a couple of offensive rebounds and put them back in. Jimmy B is up. Dean Smith is down. And the Tar Heels trail the Wolf back by two. Lebo runs out to pick up Del Negro. Bolton now versus Popson. A burst toward the baseline, and the Tar Heels foul again. This time it's J.R. Reed, and this will be the third two-shot situation the Wolfpack has had, and we've not even five minutes gone yet. North Carolina State being very aggressive in the inside game. That foul was against J.R. Reed as he was coming over to help out. Benny Bolton beat Dave Popson badly out on the wing. You don't want to foul this guy, 83.2% over the regular season to rank second in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Bolton with 35.7 rebounds in the first two games. You know, we were talking earlier today. It is really going to be tough to pick an all-tournament team. <laughs> there have been some people who've had outstanding tournaments. A number of them on these two ball clubs. And, of course, Tyrone Bogues, everywhere he plays, a crowd favorite. And he dazzled this building of 19,277 until they were beaten yesterday by the Wolfpack. We've got a timeout on the floor. 15 minutes and 58 seconds to go on the first half of this ACC Tournament Championship. The Wolfpack lead the Tar Heels. 10 to 8. Big part of this game, Marty, is going to be the decision on the boards. And thus far, each team has been very effective on the offensive boards. Here you get a chance to see Joe Wolf crashing him. Benny Bolton doesn't block him out, and Wolf converts. But North Carolina State has converted a couple of those themselves. Wolfpack leading by four, 10 to six. JRE being that step for step by Shackle for there's Popson. And really pressured on that baseline. They go to Reed inside the jump hook, and he just dropped it through there. And Jimmy Valvano jumping up and down over on the NC State bench. Chucky Brown had good position against Dave Popson, and I think the reason Jim Valvano was upset because Shackelford came across the lane to help out, and then with that ankle problem, he couldn't get back to J.R. Reed in time. That is obviously a situation that Carolina will try to exploit today as often as they possibly can. Benny Bolton drives to traffic, and that's a good call by Joe Forte. J.R. Reed got there and drew the charge. J.R. Reed was also going to steal the ball. Watch as Bolton puts it on the deck. There's a lot of traffic in here. J.R. stops. Now as Bolton comes down, J.R.'s reaching at the basketball. Good step in by J.R. Reed. It's just very difficult to drive through there to, against North Carolina. First foul against the Wolfpack. Carolina given the opportunity now to try and tie it up. Lebo looking around for somebody to give it up to. Looks left, goes right to Popson, and now to Joe Wolf. Thus far, the entire play has been from the North Carolina State inside, guys, in terms of offense. The guards haven't scored yet. Lebo drives to the land of the Giants. He gave Reed a hard pass to handle, and J.R. made the most of a tough situation. This a little bit easier. The foul by Popson again, and he scores to tie it up at 10. Another off 
offensive rebound. Kenny Smith made a great pass inside. North Carolina didn't get the first one, but once again, the offensive board hurts the Wolfpack. 14-30 remaining in the first half, and the Heels and the Packers deadlocked at 10 apiece. Baseline jumper by Chucky Brown. They leave him wide open, and he buries one. North Carolina State was still in transition. They had double teamed, and then they were rotating back to pick up their men, and that's where they're vulnerable with that double team, and if you can hit the open jumper, you can score pretty effectively, as Virginia demonstrated yesterday. Back come the Tar Heels, trailing by two. Lebo lets one the jump shot off the mark. Chucky Brown doing it at both ends of the floor. Well, he went up a couple floors on the elevator for that one. He really got up in the air. He has scored six points and has already hauled down four rebounds. He says playing in the championship game is tough. Piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> Substitutions forthcoming for both ball clubs in a moment. There's a steal by Reed. This ought to be something to watch. Now, Jim Valvano thinks that should be a foul. He's very upset that a foul was not called, but it looked like clean steal. I don't know. Chucky Brown's got to step to the ball. He was, you can't stand flat-footed and receive it against North Carolina. 12 to 12, Lebo was hoping to get a whistle, and he got one, but not the kind he was hoping for. Another foul on North Carolina. J.R. Reed, now watch Chucky Brown. He just stands there to receive the ball. Had he stepped toward that ball, then there's no question it's a foul. J.R. Reed going down with no pressure. Jeff Lebo trying to draw the charge, goes down. Benny Bolton very fortunate to get out of that trap. J.R. Reed that time did reach in, draw the foul, and that's two against Reed. Indeed it is, and he'll go right to the Tar Heel bench to sit out. Curtis Hunter is now in the Tar Heel lineup, along with Scott Williams for the second time. While joining Reed on the bench, Dave Popson. Now, Quentin Jackson's got to be careful about picking up his dribble unless he has an option of someplace to throw it. That's the way to get killed against Carolina. Mike Giomi also in the NC State lineup. Shackleford with a jump hook. Rebounded by Joe Wolf. So Carolina comes front court tied at 12, trying to get the lead. Wolf puts it on the floor. Kenny Smith makes a three-point attempt. There's Wolf. Strong rebound by Mike Giomi. We're doing this rebounding in spurts today. Marty. Lots of times we do points in spurts, but now it's rebounding. Everybody's owned the defensive boards on each end the last couple of minutes. Jackson whips it inside. Loose ball. Scott Williams has it. And into the hands of Joe Wolf. And that's a turnover caused by the ankle. Shackelford couldn't go down and get that ball. He just couldn't take the step and push off his ankle. Of course, dropping the ball didn't help either. They go to Williams. Right back to Kenny Smith. Three for the attempt. The first of the afternoon. Shackleford there, and Wolf drops off and heads down court. And Shackleford really comes down on that ankle tenderly, Marty. You just have to admire the guy for even being out there. He showed us something here yesterday. And this has been a tournament that has featured, among other things, really a multitude of injuries. Ankle injuries in particular. 12-12 tied, Del Negro baseline. Nice play by Benny Del Negro. Boy, what an impressive move. He beat Williams along the baseline and then got it up right through Williams and Wolf and Lebo. I don't know how he got the ball up on the board. Talk about all tournament candidates. He's had 34 points now and 18 rebounds. Inside Wolf. North Carolina screening away from the ball very effectively and moving without the ball very effectively. They've gotten some easy shots. And again, alluding to a point you made a minute ago, the Carolina front line doing the job now as Giomi drives. Two bodies go down, and it looks like Carolina's Curtis Hunter is uh, shaken up more than the norm as he... Of course, stays right there on the floor under that Carolina basket. You would get shaken up, too, if Mike Giomi came down full blast on you, and that's exactly what happened. The foul was not called against Giomi or Curtis Hunter. The foul is against St Scott Williams reaching in on that play. And Giomi is a big guy, and he came down his whole, the whole weight of his body came down right on top of Curtis Hunter. Hunter up. 
trying to shake the cobwebs away. And J.R. Reed now with two fouls. And, of course, Scott Williams has just picked up his second. Jomi recognizing that he has an opening getting to the basket. I think either Wolf or Williams could have been called for the reach in there. But you can see Jomi really lands hard on Curtis Hunter. And had Scott Williams not reached in, Hunter was in good position to draw the charge. Fresh body now in the backcourt for the Wolfpack. Kelsey Weems joins Vinny Del Negro. Quentin Jackson sits down. Avi Lester also in the state lineup. Young man at the free throw line made a couple of big defensive plays all in the same sequence at the end of that game yesterday. And State continues to be perfecto from the free throw line. They are eight for eight. Timeout at Landover. 11 minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the first half of this title game. It is State 16, the Carolina Tar Heels 14. Stay with us. This Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament game is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Lots of times when you watch basketball, you tend to focus on the ball itself. But here's Joe Wolf showing you that what happens off the ball is just as important. Wolf comes from away from the basketball, loses the people inside. Excellent cut by Joe Wolf to create that easy layup. There's a score with 11-12 remaining in the first half. State has uh, pretty much had the advantage early here. And North Carolina already accumulating some five fouls. The important thing about that number is that two belong to J.R. Reed and two belong to Scott Williams. It's nice to have the luxury that you can go that deep and have those guys with two fouls and still have Wolf and Popson and guys like Bucknall to come in the game. Speaking of Steve Bucknall, he is in the Tar Heel lineup. And along with Ranzino Smith, Scott Williams, J.R. Reed, Kenny Smith against Kelsey Weems, Benny Bolt, Benny Del Negro, Avi Lester, and Mike Giomi, Charles Shackelford, Chucky Brown getting a breather on the Wolfpack bench. And what we see here from North Carolina State appears to be a box and one with Weems matched up against Kenny Smith. Everybody else playing zone. State ball. That's a nice defensive switch by Jim Valvano right there. You won't see them play that extensively during the game, but he'll throw it in now and again just as a for the element of surprise, if you will, and it worked that time. Well, he shot Bucknall by it. So State up the floor with the ball. Lester handles against Scott Williams. Now it's important for Del Negro and Weems to keep moving. They've always got to make themselves available as an out. The lead pass a little bit too far for Lester, but Kelsey Weems right there to pick it up. Weems showing you what can happen when you're moving without the ball. He was sure in the right place at the right time, and Del Negro's lighting it up. I'm telling you, is he ever more? Three field goals for the junior from Springfield, Massachusetts. 18-14 Wolfpack. You notice there's Weems following Kenny Smith through. Everybody else is playing zone. Bolton and Del Negro out front. Giomi and Lester along the baseline. JR falls down. Giomi, Kenny Smith, and traveling call against the Newark, Ohio native. And Giomi turns and points an accusing finger at Kenny Smith in discussing the play with Dick Paparo, one of the officials. Now the ball's going to go on the court here. Lester and Reed collide. Reed's going to go down. Now watch as Giomi goes to get the ball. He's going to miss it. Now watch him pull it along with his feet, trying to control it. That's why the walk was called. You can't gain an advantage by scooting along the floor. Scott Williams takes the long jump shot. State not concerned about him shooting out there. They wish he would. Pops it will. Out of bounds off Giomi, and Carolina will throw it over the line again. And I give that move by Jim Valvano about a seven or an eight maybe. He was up and did a, almost a somersault over there on the bench. So disgusted that his team wasn't able to control that ball. I'll tell you what, Barishnikov might think about recruiting Valvano. He has some neat pirouettes over there along that NC State bench. He was complaining yesterday. He didn't have any clothes to wear. He looks pretty dapper today, though. He breaks out the good threads at tournament time. <laughs> Carolina's Reed not expecting to pass inside. The Tar Heels turn it over again, and Dean Smith imploring his club to get things together here as they trail by four. This box and one, I think North Carolina State will move out of that when Jeff Peebo comes back in the game, but I think they're trying to use that while North Carolina has some subs in the game. The senior, Benny Bolton, a calming influence on this state team. Del Negro dishing off to Giomi, trying to find an opening. He gets it off to Lester. And Giomi battling on the board. Boy, that was a great sequence for Giomi. Dribbling, passing, Giomi can do it all. Kenny 
Ronnie Smith. Diomi again. State leading 20 to 14 with eight minutes and 55 seconds remaining in this first half. And what intensity by North Carolina State. Their fans really getting into it here in Landover. And two Tar Heels battle, and the result out of bounds to State. Mike Diomi penetrating, not drawing the charge, getting the pass out to Lester. Now he doesn't give up. He goes right to the board. He could have stand, stood there and watched, but he elected not to, and as a result, he gets two points for the Wolfpack. Back on the floor comes Chucky Brown. A by Lester, who gave him some quality minutes, goes back to the bench. Mike Diomi doing it on both ends of the court here. He's going to pick it off the rim almost. In fact, he may have touched that while it was on the rim. What did you think? A Martin? chance. He very well could have. Right now, Branzino Smith being administered to at the Carolina bench. He's okay, and we'll resume play as State controls. The man who owns 609 victories in college basketball all in North Carolina, Dean Smith, hoping his club can emerge today with their 11th Atlantic Coast Conference tournament title, but State giving them all they want, plus some here in the first 12 minutes of play. Notice how quickly Vinny Del Negro tries to get the ball out of that weak corner area on the inbound. And then makes a great pass to Chucky Brown. That's the way you beat that trap. And thus far, State's hit the open jumpers that they've been getting. 22-14. State has its largest lead. Chucky Brown, Vinny Del Negro continue to play extremely well. State back into a man-to-man -man defense now that Kenny Smith's gone out. Getting after Carolina. There's a whistle, and they're going to call an offensive foul against Dave Popson. Popson paid for that one. Again, I think Mike Jomi is the guy that's going to draw this offensive foul. There's Jomi getting good position, puts his hands up. Mike Jomi's really been a factor the last couple trips down the court. State has now scored eight points in a row. Dave Popson joins J.R. Reed and Scott Williams as those Tar Heels with two personal fouls apiece. Kelsey Weems, Denny Del Negro, three. And Paul Hausman blowing on that whistle as that ball started on its downward trajectory as he calls a Wolfpack foul against Benny Bolton. Benny Bolton trying to do a hard task, and that is push J.R. Reed out of the way, and you got to take such an effort to push him that you get caught. That's only the second foul against State. Timeout. The score, State 22, Carolina 14, and we'll be back after this from Natural Light. North Carolina State does a nice job getting the ball over to Vinny Del Negro. Now as he shoots and watch Benny Bolt just grabs Dave Popson and throws him aside. You can see Popson imploring the referee down there, but that would be a hard one to miss. I thought it was J.R. Reed he pushed, but the replay shows he just grabbed Popson and threw him out of the way. This reminder, at the conclusion of our game, join us. We'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms player of the game. He's not too into this game. He's he? laid back for the moment, but that's one of his more passive periods, although very brief that they are, since the ball went up in the air. Right now, somewhat comfortable in light of the fact that his club, Jimmy V's team, leading by 8-22-14. They've had the tempo of the game all their way. It's important now to see if they can control it, or if they can, how they do when North Carolina sticks it in the warp drive. Carolina's in a bit of a drought. They have not scored since the 11-and-a-half-minute mark. Can Thompson win that drought? Nope. Double dribble against J.R. Reed. North Carolina was scoring effectively inside early. They were getting some easy shots on offensive rebounds and layups off some pretty good cuts. And what North Carolina State has done is they've cut that off. And North Carolina has been limited to the perimeter recently. That's one of the few times that... The Wolfpack has made a mistake here in the first half. The out-of-bounds pass gets it right back to the Tar Heels. 7-5, to five, the turnover situation, UNC against NC State. North Carolina State still in that boxing one. They didn't switch back to a man-to-man. Now Weems is matched up against Lebo. Joe Wolf, he was thinking three, but Chucky Brown checked his thoughts on that, and the Tar Heels turn it over for the eighth time. And they are turned North Carolina. Just nothing seems to be going their way right at the moment. Popson was wide open underneath. The ball's just going to go right through his hands. Wolf sees him, gets it to him. That's a pass he would normally catch. You can't throw the ball any better than that inside. So Carolina having some.
some first-half problems, and State has had a whole lot to do with it, as Virginia did here yesterday. Giovi. Boy, Benny Bolton showed you a textbook method to break out of that double team with the great bounce pass. A 10-point NC State lead, 24-14. Popson in the paint, turn around, and Carolina gets a roll, and Dave Popson has his third field goal. That's the first North Carolina score in a while, or North, yeah, North Carolina score in a while. The Wolfpack had gotten 10 straight. Almost five minutes. Jackson finds everything open. Jackson did not pick up his dribble. North Carolina came to double team. He dribbled away from the double team, and North Carolina in transition on their trap just had nobody back to help. Well, in a situation like that, the trap can be counterproductive because the defense expects the player to pick it up, which he didn't. And once he got away, it was clear sailing. 26-16 NC State. Ranzino Smith, bingo. That's the first time Ranzino Smith has taken a shot against his box in one defense, and basically Ranzino Smith is the guy that the Wolfpack was leaving alone. It's also the first points that the Tar Heels have gotten out of their backcourt, Dan. Kenny Smith, Jeff Lebo, they've been shut out so far. Tough shot by Vinny Del Negro that time. Out of bounds, Smith could not control it. Dean Smith continuing to substitute. Kenny Smith comes back. Joined by Scott Williams, Dave Popson, and Ranzino Smith Lee. And uncharacteristically, Marty, for North Carolina, they've thrown the ball in the seats more than they have in the basket. They've got nine turnovers, they've only got 16 points. Now, Jomi gets a good hand as he goes out. Jomi really did play well. We want to apologize. We have a sunspot problem, which possibly you have noted or maybe not have noted so far. Between 135 and 143, we ask you to bear with us. That problem will be cleared up shortly. Naya, the arrow points towards State, and the Wolfpack will keep the ball. And here's Benny Bolton limping out of that mess inside. Hey, he looks okay now. That was the Jim Brown limp. <laughs> As soon as he gets the ball, he's going to be ready to go. 26 to 18, Wolfpack, five minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. First half action from the Atlantic Coast Conference title game. At the cap center here in Lando. Offensive foul. Bolton and Williams both hit the deck. And the offensive foul called, and that is number three on Benny Bolton. Benny Bolton, I think, believes that he's going to beat Scott Williams on this, but Williams does a nice job moving his feet to get over in position. As we said, Benny Bolton has played well. We'll have to see how that affects North Carolina State because he's got to sit down with those three fouls. Benny's got to feel like he's snake bit because all three team fouls called against State have been called on him. There's J.R. Reed posting up inside, and he was fouled from behind by Shackelford. And as we suspected, Marty, with both Kenny Smith and Jeff Lebo in the game at the same time, North Carolina State switched out of that box and one and back into a man-to-man. -man. And in the man-to-man, -man, Shackelford on that bad ankle is just going to have a tough time staying with J.R. Reed. Did somebody tell Jomi this game was important? He's really playing hard, and that's a great shot by Reed. Three field goals for Reed, three for Popson, two for Wolf. Scott Williams has won all frontline players. Ranzino Smith, the only points for a Tar Heel backliner. It's 26 to 20. Shackleford spins to the baseline. Turnaround line, drive, jump shot, and he is in the books for the first time. Good shot by Shackleford inside. Stay by eight. Wolf wants to go to Williams, can't. Plays instead to Lebo. He was fouled as he started down the lane. And the man who committed that foul right there, Vinny Del Negro. Vinny Del Negro knows he commits the foul. He's going to drop down inside, and then he just can't get back in time to get Lebo. And I think he's disgusted with himself that he didn't resist the temptation and reached around and slapped him on the arm. Kenny Smith will trigger. Stayed in the man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds play, and they did a nice job despite some screening by North Carolina. Kenny Smith fails to get the reverse layup to go down, and traveling ball against the Wolfpack. Carolina will get it right back. 
that's just a rule right there as Kenny Smith is not able to control the ball very well catch the ball and you go down with the ball that's a traveling violation that's a tough break this looks like Kenny Smith has a good shot at it but Jackson was actually in pretty good defensive position Smith was never really able to control the ball and that's why he missed that shot inside Scott Williams. Joe Wolf with a good effort to keep the ball in bounds and maintain possession for his team. Lee Ball for a three point. You cannot give a great team like North Carolina three shots at it, and that's what the Wolf Pack did on that occasion. And you know, it's like a sleeping giant. You can go and go and go, and either Kenny Smith or Jeff Lebo having scored, but you know sooner or later that's all going to turn around. 28-23, five points. The Tar Heels are as close as they've been in a while. They force the turnover, but it's out of bounds to the Wolf Pack. North Carolina State's play has become a little ragged, Marty. They're, they're getting into more of a running game that they want to try to avoid. This is a break for North Carolina State. North Carolina nearly has the steal, but it goes off out of bounds. See Del Negro penetrating inside. Good double team. He loses the ball, and then as Scott Williams tries to recover it, he knocks it out of bounds. They're talking about it across the way with three minutes and 23 seconds to go in the first half. NC State leading Carolina 28 to 23. And we'll be back. This Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament game is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Don't forget to stay with us at halftime. Paul Cameron will be announcing another winner in our Pepsi New Generation Contest. There's a Tar Heel fan. Then there's the offense and the defense as they set up to resume play with State in front by five points in the time remaining in this half number one. Here you go. Already we can discuss that because Bolton has three for the Wolfpack and you saw the trio of Carolina players who have been hit with two fouls apiece. And what Bolton's three fouls does is it limits North Carolina State to one legitimate outside shooting threat and that's Del Negro. So that makes North Carolina's defensive job a tad easier than it was with Bolton in the game. Speaking of Bolton, he right now reclines on the Wolfpack bench. They've got Jackson, Del Negro, Brown, Shackleford, and Giomi. Loose ball. Jeff Lebo goes Quinton Jackson up and down, and Jackson fouled him. Jeff Lebo is going to knock the ball away from Quinton. No, Quinton Jackson. Quinton Jackson made a mistake there. He lost control of the ball and thought that he shouldn't go after it and get it. He can go after that ball and get it. He should have gone up and challenged Lebo for that ball. Instead, he tried to keep Lebo away and in so doing, got himself a foul. State is led by as many as 10. Carolina has chopped that deficit in half and trying to continue some good play. The Tar Heels have shown the last couple of minutes. Up top and too far. Kenny Smith tried to thread the needle of J.R. Reed. Man, that's a tough pass to make. It's a tough pass to make, and I think when you're trying to come back in a basketball game, you should be trying to make the easy play, not necessarily the great play. And I think that's a matter of North Carolina just being a little impatient, Kenny Smith forcing it when he really didn't need to. There's Shackle for two to pass. Out of bounds to State. Scott Williams thought they were going to say Carolina, but uh, they ruled the other way. Scott Williams, we've been talking about it for three days now. He's not exactly an unbiased spectator. As a matter of fact, he's not. Those players, they tend to be very prejudiced when it comes to whose ball it is. <laughs> Del Negro, Chucky Brown. Giovi, crisp pass off to Del Negro and gets it right back to the 15-footer. Boy, he's having a fine game. He has come in, and he's just been super for North Carolina State, and they really need that with Bolton on the bench in foul trouble. Eight points for Giomi. J.R. Reed inside turnaround by Joe Wolf. Reed has out of bounds. Paul Hausman says Carolina ball. That'll get Dave Popson a chance to come back in. There's another biased observer. You saw Quentin Jackson. Carolina. Well, both clubs, as a matter of fact, shooting under 50%. The State doing a little bit better job of it. And, of course, they had the seven-point lead with only a minute and 50 seconds remaining in the half. Joe Wolf takes from long range. Jeff Lebo. Hobson. Scott Williams lost it, but recovers in time. Kenny Smith plays to Williams. He'll take it to the basket and score. 
Good patience by North Carolina, and that was a play where North Carolina had a second opportunity because of working the offensive boards, and that's really hurt North Carolina State in this game. A low-scoring first half, which is to the advantage of North Carolina State. Virginia effectively was able to take the break away from the Tar Heels most of the day yesterday, and State has done it here today in this championship game. State not attacking that time once they beat the double team. That's something that they've done very effectively today, but that time they were content just to not get the turnover. Del Negro, fadeaway, bank shot. Right into the hands of Chucky Brown. Chucky Brown in the right place at the right time. He had good position, and so therefore he was able to take up that missed rebound. Joe Wolf and Giomi collide in open field. No whistle. The state bench erupts. Shot clock 33 seconds, game clock 42, so Carolina will have to launch. They've really played well defensively, Martin. They certainly have. That's been the strong fashion of their first half game. Kenny Smith misses, and now State has to be thinking about maybe a 9 or 10 point halftime lead. With the shot clock off, they've got plenty of time to come up and set up. 18 seconds to go. You haven't seen North Carolina get any open shots from the perimeter. They've had somebody in their face the entire game. Clock winding down now. Seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds. Del Negro, he has a shot in mind. Didn't get it. They battled. Shackleford lays it in. Will not count. Dick Paparo says no basket. And half one of this one is in the books as we look at it again. North Carolina State just didn't have enough time. Del Negro gets the shot up, and you can see the one-legged Charles Shackelford battling Popson for the ball. The clock runs out before he gets the shot off. Good first-half effort by the Wolfpack. Without any question, the Atlantic Coast Conference title game of the first half of our ball game today being brought to you in part by Food Lion and by Goodyear. Halftime score at the Cap Center, 32-25 Wolfpack. We'll be back right after this. Services, from discounts on trading stocks and bonds to fixed income securities to special retiree plans to keep your dollars strong. That's how we work to be the best bank in the neighborhood. This exclusive live coverage of the 1987 Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament from Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is brought to you by Piedmont Airlines. Hayes Microcomputers, Central Fidelity, Pepsi, Goodyear, Win Dixie, NCNB, Budweiser, The Jefferson Pilot Company. Mazda, and by South Carolina National Bank. And let's take a look at our Piedmont halftime stats. Neither team shot well at all, Dan. Uh, I think the figures are really somewhat misleading, uh, the intangibles, and that is the way that uh, State played defense and, and the way they were very, very patient. I think it, the, there's a couple stats. You can see the free throws standing out there. That's an indication that North Carolina State has not attacked inside very well. They did early in the game. They got some easy opportunities, but they never went back to it. And so, therefore, they don't have anything to show from the, uh, from the free throws.
free throw line. State's done a good job. North Carolina with 18 points on the inside. That matches up with North Carolina State's 18 points on the inside. You notice the perimeter play we talked about. Jeff Lebo only has three points. Kenny Smith has not scored. He's 0 for 5 from two-point range. He's 0 for 1 from three-point range, and that's been a big factor. Mike Giomi coming off the bench. He's got eight points, and he's got six rebounds at halftime. He has done, or four rebounds at halftime. He's done a tremendous job. J.R. Reed and Dave Popson both with six points. Joe Wolf with four points. Scott Williams with four points. You'd expect to see the name of Kenny Smith, Jeff Lebo in there, but it's not there because they simply did not have very good first half. And it definitely ain't over until the fat lady sings as that graphic so graphically tells the story. Five of the last seven championship games, the team behind at the half came back to win. And a note for you, this is the lowest scoring half for the Tar Heels this season. They have not scored this few number of points in any half over the course of a season that has seen them go 29-2. and two. So... Uh, we better hold off until the fat lady sings. Well, that's right. Now, North Carolina, in the two games that they've lost this season, they've shot under 50%. Now, they shot under 50% in the, some games that they've won, but in the two, then their two losses, they have shot less than 50% from the floor. They're only shooting 44% at halftime. Keep in mind, Benny Bolton has three fouls as we start the final 20 minutes of play of the Atlantic Coast Conference basketball season. Joe Wolf, Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Jeff Lebo. And here we see a new wrinkle from North Carolina State. They're playing a triangle in two defense. North Carolina solves it by going inside to J.R. Reed. The inside people for State were playing a triangle zone. The guards for North Carolina State were guarding Kenny Smith and Jeff Lebo man to man. But Carolina handled it easily. 32 to 27 as the Tar Heels draw first blood here in the second half. Chucky Brown to Benny Del Negro. That's Benny Bolt. They're joined by Charles Shackleford and Quentin Jackson. Stripped of the ball. Lebo with a takeaway. Kenny Smith for three. And he is still scoreless. That's the first time in this game that North Carolina State has turned the ball over to North Carolina, giving the Tar Heels a fast break situation. Now they've turned the ball over, but not in that fast breaking situation. If they can avoid that, they're in good shape. What a catch by Chucky Brown. Chucky Brown has a dozen points. Joe Wolf for three. Tried to get his own rebound. Chucky Brown stepped in front. 34-27 Wolfpack. Always block out the shooter, and Chucky Brown did on that occasion. Backdoor cut. The stop and the pop by Del Negro. Dave Popson hauls it down. And Jimmy Balbano again doing his Barishnikov imitation in front of the Wolfpack bench. Somebody's got to tell him they can't all go in. Nice pass by Joe Wolf to Dave Popson. Carolina has attacked inside twice. They've gotten easy shots. Looks a lot like the way the game started. North Carolina getting some easy opportunities inside. 34 to 29. There's the inside pass. Shackleford could not get to. Kenny Smith weaving his way in and out of traffic. He shovels off to Buckman. Bingo again. Jimmy B taking a look at that massive scoreboard overhead. Del Negro starts up the floor with State's lead having been shaved to three. North Carolina has been able to play in transition. That's where they're most effective. North Carolina State had a very slow pace in the first half, but thus far it's been Carolina dictating the pace here. With a jump hook. And the easiest way to slow North Carolina down is the score. Obviously. You've got that right. J.R. Reed, Jeff Lebo. Up top to Reed. He went up. He made down. The first layup rolls off. It is saved by Shackleford. Shackleford hopping around on one foot, trying to rebound and save the basketball. NC State could put all the mystery to rest as to whether or not they will be one of the 60. And Chucky Brown just got hurt. He sure did. It looked like he twisted his ankle as he spun away from Dave Popson. And he is in obvious pain. Jimmy Balvano looks to the heavens, wondering what in the world can happen next. Chucky Brown has been a big, big factor for the Wolfpack. He had 10 points at halftime. He had six rebounds at halftime. He was the Wolfpack's leading scorer. And he's had a bucket here in the second half. I, it looked like he just stepped on Joe Wolf's foot as he cut across the lane and turned his ankle. But what they're, what they're working on is his knee. They're not looking at his ankle, it's his knee. 
and that's not a good sign. Well, the obvious concern being shown by everybody on that Wolfpack bench. Now he just said, I'm all right. Well, we'll see. He put some pressure on it. Hobbling around just a little bit. I don't think there's a whole lot of question as to whether or not he wants to stay in the ball game. <laughs> you don't come out of a ball game like this. So Chucky Brown walking it off. Let's see if Jimmy B will lead him in or, or make a substitution and giving a chance to really regroup before putting him back out there. Well, even if Brown was completely all right, Jimmy Valvano would take him out because after that length of time, if he leaves him in, it costs him a timeout. And so he's going to substitute for Giomi. They're not going to lose a whole lot when you consider the way Mike Giomi played the first half. Traveling violation against Jackson. Carolina came with a trap. Jackson fell down, turned it over. Carolina down by five with the ball. That's a turnover that's caused by North Carolina's defense. Jackson trying to get stopped. His foot just slips out from under him. Saw that trap coming, was trying to get away from the ball. Already three turnovers for the Wolfpack here in the second half. Carolina has yet to turn it back over. Inside, Hobson. Good defense by Giomi. And now Lebo. Jomi really doing some nice work. He sure is. Kenny Smith drives inside, shovels it off to Wolf. He lets it go and banks it in. And that's a two-pointer. And the third field goal for Wolf. Carolina creeps to within three at 36-33. You shoot a bank shot from that range, Marty. You ought to get some extra credit. <laughs> Shackleford somewhat gingerly handling the basketball. He, of course, playing with a less than solid ankle. Loose ball. Kenny Smith. Shovels it off to J.R. Reed. J.R. will take it to the basket, get it off, knocked it in. The acting job by Quentin Jackson didn't work with the officials. Well, he didn't get a charge, and not only didn't he get to charge, he didn't distract J.R. Reed. That's a pretty impressive play by J.R. to concentrate sufficiently to get that ball in the basket. Here you see J.R., he stops. No contact there at all, but it has to be in a man's mind when he goes up that there's somebody underneath his feet there, but J.R. concentrated on the basket. North Carolina has awakened. 15-54 remaining in the game, and it's a one-point affair. State 36, Carolina 35. NC State clinging now to a one-point lead, 36-35. Some torrid second half, Tar Heel shooting five out of eight, while State is getting two out of three. Points off of turnovers. North Carolina trying to take big time advantage here in the second half, and they've done just that. Quentin Jackson with a little shot, and he makes the most of it. His second field goal, and State's lead goes to a 38-35 spread. I think the turnovers are the key to the second half so far, Marty. The Wolfpack's turned it over a couple times in this half. Jeff Lebo, nice touch. That running jump shot, he has five points, and again, it's a one-point differential, 38-37. It's just very hard to keep a fellow like Jeff Lebo and Kenny Smith under control an entire basketball game, and I'm sure Lebo or Smith are going to come alive very soon here for the Tar Heels. J.R. Reed goes down. That's a good call. Good call by Paul Hausman, although I have to wonder if maybe Benny Bolton didn't hook him as he went by. I think we're going to see in the replay here that Benny Bolton does hook him, but I think maybe the call is because Reed lead in, leaned into him before the hook. Listen to those Tar Heel fans. The official's in good position to make the call. He can clearly see both the hook and J.R. leaning in. I thought he called it because J.R. leaned in a little bit. That is three fouls on Reed. First Tar Heel player to get to that point. Shackleford, he really is having problems to do, bring on that bad ankle. Kenny Smith has scored for the first time, and North Carolina jumps out in front 39 to 38. That's the first time Carolina has led since two to nothing. Charles Shackleford just cannot pivot and maneuver inside as he is used to doing. North Carolina very effective out on the fast break. Once again, Quinton Jackson doesn't draw the charge that he's looking for, and North Carolina concentrates hard enough to get it in the basket. Now let's see if State can now get the momentum back. A three-pointer would do it. A 
three-pointer would have done it, Marty, but I don't know that they wanted to shoot the ball that quickly in that situation. You don't want to get into a running game with North Carolina. Kenny Smith, good catch on a not-so-hot pass by Jeff Lebo. Scott Williams now in the North Carolina lineup. Dave Thompson is out. Kenny Smith on the stop and go. The shot rejected. J.R. Reed stripped of the ball, and the lead pass picked off by Jeff Lebo. Three-point shot. Del Negro foul by Joe Wolf. And Vinny Del Negro in this tournament has done a super job on the backboards. Kenny Smith was one foot on the three-point line. That was a two-point attempt, and Kenny Smith just has not having any luck at all from outside. Vinny Del Negro right up there with Joe Wolf and J.R. Reed, and Joe Wolf is called for the foul. Kelsey Weems has come in for North Carolina State. That's Weems. And Ranzino Smith has checked in for the Tar Heels. Stay down a point, 39-38, with 13-46 remaining in the game. North Carolina stays in the man-to-man -man defense. There's Giomi again. That time, Wolf knocked it away. Coast Conference Tournament Championship. And these clubs getting together in this game for the fourth time since the founding of this conference back in 1954. Scott Williams with a fadeaway and a whistle on top of it. And a foul against J.R. Reed for knocking down Mike Giomi, fighting for position. That's four fouls on J.R. Nice shot by Scott Williams. He's really shown some aggressiveness the last couple of days offensively. And as that ball goes through the hoop, JR is going to knock Mike Giomi down. There's Giomi, 41, and Reed in the right hand of the screen there. Looks good block out by Giomi. JR just steps around him and throws him down. That's four fouls on Reed. Okay, JR Reed leaves with 13 17 remaining, and North Carolina leading by three points, 41 to 38. Let's see what effect, if any. It will have on his Tar Heel ball. Club Kenny Smith has come back in. Curtis Hunter is there. Scott Williams, Joe Wolf, Jeff Lebo. Kelsey Weems cross-courting to Del Negro. North Carolina has done a much better job cutting off the passing lanes for North Carolina State, making the attack more difficult. And there's an example. Another big play for Scott Williams. And it's Kenny Smith. I think he will travel. He sure did. It negates a tremendous move by Kenny Smith, who hung in the air interminably. But the basket taken away. Mike Giomi's in pretty good position. Makes Kenny Smith change direction. I think Smith got down the court too quickly for his teammates that time. Nobody was there for Kenny to pass the ball to. Well, Carolina's had a chance to open up what is already a three-point lead. You're right. North Carolina State has not looked very sharp the last few possessions. Giomi trying to set a high screen for Weems. That didn't work. There's the double team. Quickly finding the open man. That happens to be Benny Bolton. And we have a tie game on a three-pointer from the corner by Bolton. Patience by Bolton to make sure he got himself collected. Had a good shot. 41-41 tie. Wolf had faking. Giomi not having any of it. Quick pass right back into Wolf. And the roll through gets Carolina. A 43-41 lead. That's a great job by North Carolina. Get the ball to Wolf. He sees there's nothing there. Pitches it back out. But to go right back to him before Giomi can adjust defensively is pretty effective play. Carolina up by two. She states Bolton. Plays to Weems. And he gives it up to Del Negro. Dave Thompson will come back in a moment for the Tar Heels. Giomi working hard against Wolf inside. And Wolf's doing a nice job cutting him off in there. Bolton with a jump. Powell shot go. And guess who? Chucky Brown. Chucky Brown with another offensive rebound. Well, Brown has 14 points to lead all scores. State to me and to me. Go Wolf to the basket. Rebounded by State. Hard collision between Wolf and Bolton, and Benny getting up a little bit more slowly than Wolf did. You'd get up slowly if Joe Wolf fell on you, too. My game 43. State's Giomi to the baseline. Blue left drawing in. He has done very little wrong today, I'll tell you. That was a nice, aggressive move by Giomi. 
points off the Wolfpack bench. State 45, Carolina 43. Jumper by Scott Williams. He said he was confident in his offensive ability. Well, he will forevermore be remembered for that 14-foot jump hook he hit yesterday to send that game into a second overtime against Virginia. Carolina, of course, ultimately won it on a jumper in the lane by Kenny Smith with three seconds to go. North Carolina State now showing zone defense. It's like a 1-3-1. One, one. Wolf running the baseline. Lebo out on the point. They like to trap in the corners out of this defense. State now trying to adjust to his zone attack. Ten seconds left on the shot clock, though. State doesn't have a lot of time. It's Del Negro against two defenders. No sweat. Eight points for Vinny Del Negro. State in front again by a deuce, 47-45, and we're under ten minutes remaining. Curtis Hunter inside to Williams and score a first foul of the game against Chucky Brown. Vinny Del Negro does a nice job. Watch him get very high on his jump, release the ball with one hand. That's just a great shot. North Carolina played well defensively. The Wolfpack and the Tar Heels continue to have at it. Timeout with 9.34 to go in the game. The Wolfpack leading 47-45. We'll be back after these words from Budweiser. This Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament game is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. We talked how North Carolina State was a different team than the last time they met North Carolina, and one reason is the play of Mike Tiomi. Get an opportunity to see Benny Bolton driving there, Chucky Brown tipping it in, and Chucky Brown's another reason. Last time they played, Jomi had two points and three rebounds. He's got 10 today, and Chucky Brown has just been superb with 14 points today. They've been the mainliners for the men of Jimmy Balbano, and right now up two on the Tar Heels, and that man, Dean Smith, trying to come out with another hard part victory to coin an often used cliche, and that turns out to be the ultimate outcome. State with a win would get the automatic NCAA bid. That's the cloud that could turn in, ironically, to blue sky for Jimmy Balbano if they win this game. They pops and turn shoots. They go up in a sea of arms for the rebound. And the accusing finger, Joe Forte points at Steve Bucknow. North Carolina State really banging their defensive boards. North Carolina has had success today on the offensive board, but that time it was called as a foul. North Carolina never got to the free throw line in the first half, and they have not been to the free throw line yet. That's their fourth team foul, while State has been hit with only one. 47-45, nine minutes remaining in the game. State led 32-25 at the break. Carolina twice is led by two here in the second half. Bolton shoots for the four-point lead, and he got it. And boy, that was a tough shot by Bolton. He muscled his way past Curtis Hunter, then had to get it up over Dave Popson. Bolton has nine. State by four. And this is a lineup in the game for Carolina that doesn't have a lot of inside power, firepower. Bucknall and Hunter are not big scorers. State stays in the man-to-man. -man. There's Kenny Smith getting inside. Tip up, no good. Ball slapped toward the sideline. Del Negro careening into the far end of the Carolina bench, and he got the job done, or did he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, the... Somebody inadvertently blew the horn on the other side at the table. Well, that's exactly what happened here. Now, Mike Chiomi tips the ball out of traffic there. That's a great play by Del Negro to go into the seats after he gets the ball. That manager there probably isn't thrilled with the play because he had to get out of the way. But what happened was the fellow operating the clock thought that the ball went out of bounds, and so he blew the horn to get Joe Wolf in the game. And what Jim Valvano is complaining about, they shouldn't have stopped it anyhow. So why are they letting Wolf in the game? Very, very good point, but they are. Well, they can. That's uh, Valvano. He's got <laughs> to rewrite the rule book for that one. Wolf can get in the game. That's just a mistake by the people operating the clock over there. Because they thought uh, that Del Negro, that the official ruled that Del Negro was out of bounds, but the replay clearly showed that he was not. That was a great play by Del Negro. Let's see if State can take advantage of it. Lee 
Debo with a foul against Kelsey Weems. And Weems makes two mistakes back to back. That was a bad play to dribble in there. You're going to see he's going to beat Kenny Smith, but Lebo in great position to help. Weems misses the shot. Now he's going to go and foul Lebo, who is in good position for the rebound. You don't know what kind of a turnaround this is going to be. Here you see Weems missing the shot, and now he gets the foul. Steve Buck now. As Dan mentioned, not much of a score. His strong suit is defense, but Carolina needs some offensive points. And but now, you can't have a better situation than that in terms of hoping to score an easy basket. And for the second time today, a wide open Tar Heel just fumbles the ball out of bounds. There's, you know, he's got the ball right in his hands, just drops it off his foot. And if there's, there's an opposite of when you're hot, you're hot, that's certainly the case for North Carolina today. They just, they get in positions like this and they just can't seem to convert. The opposite is when you're not, you're not. <laughs> and right now, they're not. 7.48 remaining, State 49, Carolina 45. Stay with us. 49-45 the score here in North Carolina State. That's in the second half at Freedom Hall in Louisville. Memphis State with a 15-point lead over Denny Crum's Louisville Cardinals, 41-26. The announcers of this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception of this broadcast without the express written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. North Carolina State playing some good defense on the inbounds attempt by, or North Carolina playing good defense on the inbounds attempt, forcing State to call a timeout. Timeout on the floor, and we'll be back. Forty-nine, forty-five, North Carolina State with seven forty-eight remaining in this Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament Championship game. Will this story have a Cinderella happy ending for the North Carolina State Wolfpack? Well, it did for two teams in those years, 1976. The Virginia Cavaliers on this very court was a six-seeded team that won the tournament. And the last time it happened, of course, seven years ago, the Duke Blue Devils. North Carolina State got the ball inbounds pretty effectively that time. Quinton Jackson with a good decision not to try to force it in. Bolton baseline, close. And what do we got here? Thompson, it appeared, got a hand on the ball, but apparently they really got him with a body, and uh, it'll be two coming up for Benny Bolton. This was an odd-looking play. As Bolton drops to the basket, the person he crashes into is Chucky Brown, and Thompson gets called for the foul being over the back. That was a pretty good defensive play by Chucky Brown. It would have been fine, except he was on offense. <laughs> Benny Bolton, two for two from the line. He has scored a total of eight, nine points. North Carolina made a run right at the start of the second half against the Wolfpack, and the Wolfpack actually got down three points, but they've recovered very nicely. State has not missed a free throw. Ten out of ten, and they are on a ten to two run right now. 51-45. So with time running down, they have almost brought Carolina to a standoff here in the second half after leading at the break by seven. Joe Wolf strips the nets, and he's in double figures with ten. You've got Wolf with ten, Popson ten, Reed with ten, and Scott Williams with eight. They have 38 of North Carolina's 47 points. The point production from the perimeter players, the guards have been almost non-existent. They call a force out. Well, they called the foul. No, I don't think it's a foul. The ball, I think they ruled being off North Carolina. Scott Williams, Dave Popson will leave. Benny Bolton had himself in some kind of trouble over there in the corner. Break for North Carolina State that the ball is ruled to be there. Bolton looks like he got smacked on the hand. Shackleford has come back. He's got that hand pretty heavily taped. It looks like maybe he's got some problem with his thumb there. Going back trying to pull off the upset. Six minutes and 50 seconds away from doing just that with a four-point advantage. They'll make go to Quentin Jackson. 
on the other baseline. Bolton, and he has been right on the money. He's been right on the money, but we talk about North Carolina State's recovery and chemistry. And I guess the person that we haven't mentioned is the one who's most directly responsible, their new point guard, Quentin Jackson. He's running the show very well out there. J.R. Reid, he drops it through. That's exactly right, because after Kenny Drummond quit the ball club, Jimmy Valvano had uh, Vinny Del Negro playing the point for a while. It simply did not work out. And when he moved him to the big guard position and put Jackson at the point, things really started to fall into place. He can also shoot it. Boy, he sure can. You know, we talk about how much more comfortable Del Negro is at the number two guard. And the only reason Del Negro can go there is because of Jackson. What a nice play by that young man. A five-point lead now for the Wolfpack as Lebo drops one in, and he has seven points, 56-51. Anybody who watched either one of the semifinal games yesterday knows that this game is very, very far from being over. Jackson inside tackle, but he lost Reed. Stay playing right now the way they did the entire first half. Away by Scott Williams, he was hacked on the arm. Shackle for Pitt. Shackle for Scott to be careful he doesn't get a tee right there. North Carolina once again coming in the double team. You see everybody rotating out. State moves the ball very quickly, catches North Carolina in transition for the easy basket by Shackleford. Scott Williams up for a couple of shots. Jimmy Balvano, whose team won the national championship four years ago, would love to have another crack at it. Scott Williams hits the first free throw attempt by a Tar Heel in this game. There's the great difference. State has been perfect. North Carolina has been perfect. There they are. Williams gets the ball. Somebody's got to block out the shooter, and nobody did. Three-pointer by Jeff Lebo. That costs him three points. Lebo has ten. And we now have a three-point game as the heels start back. State throws it out of bounds. And that was a bad decision by Quentin Jackson. Scott Williams getting the long rebound. Nobody picking up Lebo. Williams got just enough of a screen there against Benny Del Negro to get Lebo open. So North Carolina trying to come back. It's been a game of spurts, and that three-pointer by Jeff Lebo has gotten the Tar Heels to within three points with five minutes and six seconds remaining. It could be another overtime. Who knows? State 58, Carolina 55. This Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament game is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Carolina trailing by three, getting the ball following a state turnover, and both teams lighting it up here in the second half. State 11 of 15, 73.3, UNC 60.9. to a double dribble right there, Marty. Smith inside to pops it. Smith working off the pick, goes for three. Tie game. Tied up on a three-pointer by Kenny Smith. That's his first basket of the game. And his second basket. He had a two-pointer earlier in the second half, but the Carolina backcourt tandem now starting to make its presence felt. It's important that North Carolina State have some patience here. They don't want to get into a quick game even now. Del Negro. And State, more often than not, comes right back with an answer of, the, of their own. It's a two-point shot by Del Negro. His feet were on the line. Big bucket. He has 10 points. 60 to 58 Wolfpack. They are replaying with four fouls. He spent some time on the Carolina bench here in the second half because of foul problems. Kenny Smith looping it into Reed. He backs, he turns, he shoots, he scores, and we're tied again. What a powerful inside move that was. Shook Chucky Brown off, went straight up. Nice height on his jump. Three minutes and 45 seconds to play. Lebo checking Del Negro. And for Jeff Lebo, that's his first personal. 
Wow. It's only the 16th foul against North Carolina, so North Carolina State will inbound the basketball. On the other side of the coin, State has committed only three fouls here in the second half, and that could be a factor that would work in their favor. Sure could. Bolton for three. Chucky Brown fouled, and a good foul there by Lebo. Chucky Brown once again just happens to be at the right place at the right time. When you move to the basketball, lots of times good things happen. Benny Bolton wide open for the three-pointer. He's been successful from that range today. J.R. Reed tries to tip it back. Chucky Brown gets his hands on the ball. Lebo doing everything he can to keep him from getting the shot off. And that rebound was the tenth ball down today by Chucky Brown, who has also been perfect from the line. Four for four. He has scored 14. In a 60-60 lockup with three minutes and 33 seconds to play. He looks comfortable at that free throw line. State lead 62 to 60. With a trap. Dave Thompson, Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, right back. Oh, he made the pass, turn, shoots, and boy, he's something else. He has 16 points. And 10 of them have come here in the second half. State turns it over. And that's not what Jim Valvano wanted. State does not need to run down the court and try to create something very quickly. They need to be patient with the basketball. Now Carolina with a chance to take the lead as we go under three minutes. 62 Carolina, 62 Wolfpack. Joe Wolf gives it off to Kenny Smith. And now to Reed on the baseline. The jump hook, in and out. Hudson crashed the boards but could not hang on to it. Gets down to crunch time and J.R. Reed showing that he wants the basketball. That's a real impressive move inside against Giomi. North Carolina State appeared to be back in one of those trick defenses. Looked like a tri the triangle and two again, guarding the guards man to man. The three inside guys playing zone. You saw Scott Williams. He's come back in for North Carolina. Tar Heels could not uh, get the lead. The Wolfpack now have the opportunity. Quinton Jackson is back in the game for Weems. Shackleford back in for Giomi. So Jim Valdano is going with the same offense defense. How about Chucky Brown? How about Quinton Jackson? That's an excellent pass. 18 points for Brown. The sophomore out of Leland, North Carolina. And the Wolfpack lead, 64-62. And he spent for three. The five. Was he was dropped by Quentin Jackson, so Kenny Smith slowly up. Quentin Jackson is going to get the alley oop. J.R. Reed stepped up to go for the double team, and Quentin Jackson saw that step up, so did Chucky Brown. Mike Giomi coming back. He's replacing Charles Shackelford, who continues to gingerly put pressure on that foot of his, and they rule the foul came after the shot, so Kenny Smith will not shoot after all. 14 fouls against the Wolfpack. Tar Heels down by two with a minute 50 to remaining in this game. Wolf looks low, plays to Popson, gets it back. Lebo, three-pointer, bad shot. Kenny Smith has it in the lane, and he was fouled by Quentin Jackson as he put it on the floor. That's number three on the junior from nearby Annapolis, Maryland. And Dean Smith is up off the bench complaining that that's only the fifth foul against North Carolina State. That's an excellent foul by Quentin Jackson to foul Kenny Smith before he can get the shot off. There's only a minute and 41 seconds left in the game. State still has a foul to give. Big possession here for the Tar Heels. Clock continues to tick down. Pops up. He got it done, and North Carolina comes back to tie it up with 1.26 to go. Anytime you play one of those combination zone and man-to-man -man defenses, you run the risk of a defensive mix-up like that. Popson took great advantage of that one. Well, that was
is a big possession for Carolina. You can bet the Rams this is a big one for North Carolina State. 26 on the shot clock, a minute nine on the game clock. Depending upon how long State holds this ball, if they don't score, Carolina may be able to hold for the last one. Bolton will try a long two. Gilby kept it in. He certainly did. He got the tip in as he crashed in between two Carolina defenders. Kenny Smith on the drive. Got it away and got it back. The onus now on North Carolina. J.R. Reed throws it up, and he'll go to the line with 42 seconds remaining. Benny Bolton taking a big shot, but watch Mike Giomi. Good inside position against Wolf. He tips that baby in, and what a game Mike Giomi has had, along with Chucky Brown. They've been the two standouts for North Carolina State today, along with Quinton Jackson handling the ball, and these are some big free throws for the University of North Carolina. I think Jimmy Balvano would just as soon take his chances with J.R. Reed on the free throw line. Let's face it, he's not a particularly good free throw shooter. 63.1%. And North Carolina is going to get a timeout. So with only 42 seconds to go, Carolina trailing North Carolina State, 66 to 64. And they map the strategies out now, but one thing is certain, it'll be read on the line when they come back. The well, one thing that was interesting about that, Jim Valvano was telling Quinton Jackson to wait until the official was just about ready to give the ball to J.R. Reed and then call a timeout because he wanted to call the timeout to make J.R. Reed think about it. It'll be interesting to see if once everybody goes out and lines up again, if Jim Valvano will actually call the timeout to give J.R. a nice long pause for thought. Well, State has two timeouts remaining. North Carolina, if they so desire, can stop play three more times. The only time that State has beaten Carolina when they've gone head-to-head -head for the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament Championship way back in 1959, and that was a team that featured John Richter and Lou Pasillo blowing out the Tar Heels at Reynolds Coliseum 80-56. to don't forget at the conclusion of our game, join us. We'll choose a player from each team as a Holly Farms player of the game. So J.R. Reed goes to the line. Only the second Tar Heel to shoot free throws today. Earlier in this half, Scott Williams split two. <laughs> Now, this is a rebounding substitution right here. Mike Giomi's coming in the ball game. Vinny Del Negro's going out. No matter what J.R. Reed does here, I believe you'll see North Carolina State call a timeout. But now Giomi can't come back in because he just went out. And he's got to sit out. When you take a guy out of the game like that, he's got to sit there for at least one second to tick off the clock. So now Avi Lester's going to come in. Jimmy constantly tries to rewrite that rule book. Yeah, he sure does. And they're pretty slick. They catch him every time. Fine officiating crew in this one. Dick Paparo, Joe Forte, and, and Paul Hausman. Tom Crane to stand by. Do not underline the word important enough as Reed shoots the free throws. Now Jim Valvano wants a timeout. It remains a two-point North Carolina State lead. As the Wolfpack try to climax what has been a very, very exciting weekend for the men from Raleigh, North Carolina. As we mentioned, they can dispel all doubt as to whether or not they will be among the Elite 64 if they win this game because the bid will be automatically extended. The winner of this tournament recognized as the official Atlantic Coast Conference champion. And North Carolina will have Reed back on the line for one more shot that, if successful, will cut the state lead to one point, but state gets the ball with 42 seconds to go. Interesting situation for North Carolina. North Carolina State partisans, of course, they were here and they watched North Carolina come back from the dead yesterday to win that game against Virginia, so they know that this game isn't over. And now here's, here's Vinny Del Negro trying to come back in the game. And once again, Del Negro can't come back in the game because they just took him out. And so Avi Lester's going to come back. I got to 
believe Jimmy Valvano is like most baseball managers. They are the worst in the world for knowing the rules of the game. <laughs> that's the second time he's tried it in the last three minutes. The and last both three times. Seconds. That's right. <laughs> so Del Negro goes uh, to the scorer's table as Reed gets the basketball. And Jimmy V's got his rebounding team in the game. So JR only able to get one for his 17th point. 66-65. Well, now you got some guys in the game for North Carolina State that you can foul. And now Jimmy running along the sidelines, appealing to whatever striped shirt is closest to him about getting Del Negro in the lineup. Well, Jimmy Valvano saying after that score, you ought to be able to get him in the game, but that's still not true because no time ran off the clock. You've got to run some time off the clock there, Coach. Well, he can get him in the lineup now. Yes, now. Can. Now he that's can. right. But what he was saying when the ball went through the basket on the free you throw. You should let me get him in there. That's right. And that's wrong because the, some time has to run off the clock. you got to have the ball in play again. And it simply wasn't. Jimmy's got them all fouled up over there. <laughs> they got conferences going right and left. All he wants to do is get a body in the lineup. Now he's trying to sneak one by. But these, like we say, they're clever. They're not buying any of it. And Carolina's got to hope that they've got one more big defensive play their bag of tricks uh, in the final 35 seconds. Sometimes uh, in a North Carolina game, I don't know why people call timeout, because it seems one of North Carolina's best defensive plays is guarding that inbounds pass. That's where they won the game yesterday. They prevented Virginia from getting the ball inbounds in a key situation. We'll see what they can do now. Coming back with Lebo, Smith, Reed, Wolf, and Popson. NC State has Del Negro, Jackson, Brown, Bolton, and Giomi. And look at this. That was almost a massive. And they took the inbounds back. They certainly That's did. Unbelievable. Kenny Smith puts it up. Carolina has taken the lead. NC State turns it over. The Tar Heels by a point. 19, 18, 17, 16. Seconds to go. Del Negro puts it up oh, and he's he it with 14 seconds remaining. Jim Valvano not electing to call the timeout as Vinny Del Negro brought the ball, brought the ball up the court. He told him, let's play, electing to rather attack instead of letting North Carolina get the defense set. And Vinny Del Negro. If you want a guy at the free throw line, this is the guy. Now watch this. Del Negro goes in going one way, and they throw the ball the other. Now he's going to try to bounce it off Popson's leg. Popson recognizes, moves it out of the way. And Kenny Smith, who hasn't done very much offensively the entire game, knocks in the biggest shot of the day for the Tar Heels. So the one area that NC State was most vulnerable in during the regular season, that was their inability to hit from the free throw line. They were the worst club in the conference in terms of free throw shooting proficiency at 70 percent. Ironically enough, it was their ability to shoot free throws in the overtime that produced the win over Duke in the quarterfinal round. And today, they had not missed a shot from the line in 12 attempts. Yesterday, they were 17 out of 26 against Wake Forest in the double overtime win. You want a guy at the free throw line, as we said, for North Carolina State. The guy you want there is Vinny Del Negro. He put the game against Duke away. He's a 90% free throw shooter against ACC competition. These are some pretty big free throws, however, for Vinny Del Negro. If he only hits one, then North Carolina has a chance to get the last shot of the game, and that's a good position for the Tar Heels. So Vinny needs to make at least one. First time he's been there in this ball game. He has scored 10 points. The situation, 14 seconds remaining. North Carolina leads 67 to 66. Now, if you're the Wolf Pack, you want to be careful. You don't want to violate the lane and have one taken away. The game is tied. to show some discipline if you're somebody from North Carolina State right now because if he misses you got to be careful you don't want it over the back spot. No sweat. So 14 seconds to go. Carolina will get it up. And Weems trying to keep it away from Kenny Smith and that's a great play by Weems. There's a jumper by Joe Wolf. A wild shot and it is Ranzino Smith putting it up. No good. NC State has won the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament Championship game. The game's over.
Nation. And no surprise and no apologies, I'm sure, from Jimmy Valvano and his North Carolina State University Wolfpack. They hang on and defeat the Tar Heels, favored by a sizable margin here today to win the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Final score this afternoon, 68 to 67, as we take a look at a frenetic final 10 seconds of play. The key to this whole thing is Kelsey Weems at the top of your screen keeps the ball away from Kenny Smith. That's a tough shot by Joe Wolf. Rebounds off very hard, and everybody's just going after it here. Now, this is a pretty good look by Ranzino Smith. That's not a bad shot. Three-point shot, but again, that bounces off. And here's Mike Giomi going down. He travels, but the clock runs out. There was a question, and here you get a look at the coach's reaction, whether the clock was out or not. It was ruled that the clock was out. Here's Jim Valvano. He's not too happy. You can never fault him for being one not to display his emotions. He was teary-eyed when he came out of that pack. Our Holly Farms players of this ACC Tournament Championship game for North Carolina, J.R. Reed, he had 17 points. And for the Wolfpack of NC State, another fine performance by the youngster, Chucky Brown, 18 points and 10 rebounds. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the ACC to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. It is all over here at Landover, Maryland. North Carolina State pulling off the upset to defeat the Tar Heels 68-67. We'll be back.